If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and reread the question before listening on. In order to answer any optimization question, we're going to be following an eight step procedure. In step one, we will draw a well labeled picture. Now we have gone ahead and have done that already. Notice that because there is a river bordering one side of the farm plot, that we don't have to label any fencing for that side of the river. The river itself will account for one side of the fence. The other dimensions are labeled X and Y. We can now go on to step two, which asks us to develop a constraint equation. Now, a constraint equation is going to be based on whatever number is provided to you in the question. If we look at the question, in this case, the only number that's provided is this 800 meters of wire. That's going to represent the perimeter of this garden or this plot of farmland. So what we're going to do is add up the three sides and set that equal to 800. So we could simply say that y plus x plus y has to equal the 800 meters of wire. And of course, we would want to simplify that by combining the y's. So we can write x plus 2y is equal to 800 meters of fencing. So that's step two. In step three, we're going to solve the constraint either for x or y, whichever variable it's easier to solve for. Hopefully, we can see that in this case, it's easier to solve for x. So we do that by simply subtracting 2y from both sides of the equation. So we can cancel the two y's on the left side. In step four, we have to develop a so-called objective equation, which means we have to ask ourselves, what are we actually seeking to maximize or minimize in this particular question? Well, this question asks us to determine the largest area. So we're trying to maximize the area of this rectangular plot of farmland. So that means we need to develop an equation for the area of this rectangular plot. Well, of course, the area of a rectangle is equal to its length multiplied by its width. And based on the labels in our drawing, we can say that the area is equal to the length, which is x, multiplied by the width, which is y. So this would be our objective equation. Now in step five, we're going to substitute our expression for x or y into the objective. So remember that we had solved for x in the previous equation, what we're going to do is substitute that expression for x into our objective equation. And after doing so, we would want to simplify that equation. So we're going to go ahead and distribute this y. So this gives us an area equation in terms of y equal to 800y minus 2y squared. So this is a nice objective equation that is written in terms of a single variable, which means we're ready for step six, which asks us to determine the critical points. Now you'll remember from your studies of calculus that the critical points are the points where the derivative is equal to zero. There are also points where the derivative is undefined, but that doesn't apply here. So again, we're looking for points where the derivative is equal to zero, which means we have to compute the derivative. We're gonna call that derivative a prime, you could also call it dA dy. And we're just using some basic derivative rules. So the derivative of 800y is 800. And then we use a power rule for the de next derivative where we multiply the power by the coefficient. That gives us 4y. And then the power is subtracted by 1. So it's now 4y to the 1. Now again, finding critical points requires us to set the derivative equal to 0. We'll solve this for y. Perhaps we can add 4y to both sides of this equation. And then dividing both sides by 4 gives us a y value equal to 200. Now at this stage, we don't know whether that value of y would either minimize the area or maximize the area. So we have to test whether it does so. And that is step 7, determine whether we have ourselves a local minimum or a local maximum. So this typically involves the first derivative test. And to do the first derivative test, what we're going to do is just simply draw a number line. On that number line, we will plot our value of y, which was 200. This is the critical point. And then we're going to select values that are near the critical point. So for instance, right here, we could use 199. And then right on the other side of the critical point, we could use 201. And what we do is we plug that into the derivative. Now, recall that the derivative, a prime, was equal to 800 minus 4y. So we're going to test 199 by plugging that into the derivative. So in other words, we're going to calculate a prime of 199. So we plug in 199 for the y value. And when you compute this, you will find that the value is positive. It's greater than zero. And when the derivative is greater than zero, that means that your function is increasing. So your area function would be increasing. It would look something like that. And now we're going to plug in the other test value of 201. 
And when we do that, we get a derivative that is negative. It's less than zero. When your derivative is negative, that means your function is decreasing. So our area function would look something like that. And lo and behold, we can see that directly at the critical point, we can see that there is a local maximum. So you might want to just summarize the results by saying that therefore, at y equals 200, the area is maximized according to the first derivative test. And now that we know that y equals 200 maximizes the area, we can go back and actually complete the question. Step eight asks us to you know, answer the question. A lot of students just give up at this point thinking they're done, but we have to answer the specific question. And in this case, they're asking for a couple of items. They want the largest area. So we do need to find the area. And if we scan our work, we would see that we have a nice area equation right here. We know the area is 800y minus 2y squared. So let's come down here, write that down, and plug in 200 for y. And when we calculate this area, we would find that the area when y is equal to 200 is 80,000. And the unit here would be square meters, not just meters, because we're calculating an area. So this is the correct answer for the area. But there was something else that the question asked us to, cal to calculate, and that was the dimensions. Now, the dimensions just mean the values of x and y. Now, we already have the value of y. Recall that y was equal to 200. We still need to find x. But that's not so bad to find, because we can see right here that x is equal to 800 minus 2y. So we'll write down that equation and then we'll plug in the y value. And when we do that, we can see that x will equal 400 meters. So looking back at the original picture, the x dimension was 400 meters, so that would be the side parallel to the river, and the y was 200 meters, that is the side that is perpendicular to the river. So those are the correct answers for the dimensions.